Thanks for joining us for TechSpray's PCB cleaning presentation. My name is Kevin Pulowski, Senior Product Manager for TechSpray, and I'm going to introduce this and then pass it on to Pierce Pallon, Lab Manager for TechSpray, and he's going to take you through it. But before we get started, let me give you an overview of TechSpray. TechSpray is a division of Illinois Toolworks, and we're a chemical manufacturer in Amarillo, Texas. And we've been doing this for about 40 years, okay, 40 years producing uh, defluxers, maybe about 30 years conformal coating. So we've been doing this a long time. And we're known as a cutting edge chemical developer worldwide, okay, so this includes Asia and Europe and especially the U.S. Now TechSpray offers a wide variety of products for the electronics industry, including conformal coatings, aerosol and bulk cleaners, inline and batch defluxers batch stencil cleaners, temporary solder masks, desoldering wick, soldering tips, and precision tools, and much more. Okay, so now let me pass it on to Pierce Pallon, our lab manager, and he'll take you through the benefits of cleaning circuit boards. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, my name is Pierce Pallon, and as Kevin said, I am the lab manager here at TechSpray. Uh, this is going to be a very general hit the high points type of uh, outline on just the cleaning basics. Uh, as you can see from the outline that you're looking at, these are the areas that we're going to cover. Uh, why do we clean? Associated problems with uh, flux residues, the types and source of contaminants, and the very bare bones basics of cleaning. Okay, the major question here is why do we want to clean? Reliability. You do not want failures in the field. You don't want customers coming back on you because you've got unclean boards that are causing problems in the field, possibly recalls. Why in the world would you want to apply conformal coating on an assembly that wasn't previously cleaned? Because your performance of your coating is dependent on the cleanliness of your board. The following few slides illustrate some examples of coating failures due to unclean substrates. The one on the left here is delamination where the coating is actually starting to detach from the, the substrate. The one on the right is called uplift. We'll get into a little bit of, get into that a little more later. Um, it's actually caused by contaminants that are uh, re-moisturized, if you will, over and over again until the coating basically just lifts up from the substrate. These two show de-wetting of the applied coating on the, the components or any substrate. There's contamination that's here that will not allow complete coverage and wetting by the solvents and the resins of the, of the coating. This illustrates corrosion uh, formed or caused by flux residues. The darker brown area on the right are flux residues, however it's been chipped away and you can see the corrosion, the blue and the blue-green areas around the pin receptacle. Both of these pictures illustrate dendritic growth that have been covered by the coating. Um, we'll get into a little bit more of that later on, but just suffice it to say that dendrites can cause shorts in your system. The two pictures that you see here are highly magnified um, slides of tin whiskers. Now in the past, the mechanisms for these have been uh, shown to, to be caused by physical stresses and intermetallic stresses. However, here recently there have been uh, some mechanisms that have been proposed uh, where the cleanliness or lack of cleanliness of your board contributes to that. Now we'll go into a few types and the sources of contamination that you're likely to see in the manufacturing area. First, let's look at the substrate itself. As you get the boards in from your board manufacturer, there are a variety of contaminants that can be on the substrate uh, if your board manufacturer does not clean prior to shipping. These include dust from the cutting process, 
mold release materials, there could be moisture trapped in the laminate material that needs to be baked out prior to doing anything in your process. We also have environmental residues to contend with. Most of these are generally airborne and they can be directly related and tracked back to the air intake of your facility uh, and how well it filters and conditions the air coming into your building. It can be particulates, it can be humidity, some of these are ionic in nature. And basically what you have to remember is that whatever is upwind of your facility is coming through your air intake. Finally, we have cleaning agent residues. When we try and formulate these products during the development phase, we, we look at it as first do no harm. However, this is only as good as the, as the process. Um, most of these agents have to be rinsed. Um, they contain a variety of different components. They have solvents that can carry the dissolved contaminants around. They have sap uh, saponifiers, which are high pH uh, materials. Those can initiate corrosion. We have surfactants uh, that can be either ionic or non-ionic in nature. Uh, many times these are in there for their, for their detergent action, but they can also be in there for, uh, as wetting agents. If these are not properly rinsed, they're a source of film deposits which, which can grab a hold of other contaminants. Uh, you also have defoamers. These are generally insoluble by nature, and those are another source of film deposits. Of course, you also have uh, sources of contamination that originate in your assembly process. Uh, some examples can be masking residues like latexes. You can have leach plasticizers for synthetic materials. Uh, if you're using uh, masking tapes of such, uh, a lot of those have silicone adhesives which are highly migratory. Uh, there can be residues from handling the boards, the salts and oils from your hands, ESD lotions, the waxes that are uh, uh, included in those, and finally, flux residues. Just a short review on the types of uh, flux residues that there are. There are uh, rosin, or what they call just R fluxes. These are natural gum rosin fluxes. Basically, it's pine tar. Uh, and they're composed of weak organic acids. You have RMA, which is rosin mildly activated, and this is the same rosins with additional activators that are included into the formulation. And these are very corrosive if the heat profile is not followed and if there are any unactivated materials after the soldering process and if they're not removed almost immediately. Uh, this is a great source of future corrosion and dendritic growth. We also have the OA or the water soluble fluxes. These are highly activated varieties and they must be cleaned immediately after the soldering process. The longer you leave these on the substrate, the more potential there is for corrosion and dendritic growth. Uh, normally, uh, it's always been said that a DI wash will get these off since they are water soluble, but a lot of times that's just not enough. Another main category of fluxes are the no cleans. Now, assuming that your heat profile is correct and, and all of the components are compatible, the uh, ionic flux residues as such. Uh, they will be fully consumed when it's activated and brought up to, to the correct soldering temperature. Have you ever heard this? You don't have to clean no clean fluxes. Well, that's just not true. Now, no clean doesn't mean that there are no residues because there certainly are. Uh, these residues can, contri can contribute to adhesion problems, dewetting, reversion issues, um, there are ways to get around this and it's making sure that your flux residue is chemically compatible with your coating. Sometimes you can find an incompatibility that does cause you an issue. If you change your coating, change your flux, that might be a way to get around that. Let's discuss a few moments about the design of a cleaning process. The big four variables in any cleaning process is your reaction or your reactivity with the soil, the contact time that the chemistry is dwelling, the temperature and physical agitation or the mechanical energy that you input into the system. 
What do we mean when we say find a cleaning agent that reacts with the soil? Well, you have to define what that is. And if you've ever remembered from your freshman chemistry course, like dissolves like. You've got to find a chemistry that will dissolve the soil that you're working with. Then you match your cleaning equipment with the cleaning chemistry. And please, always, always, always work with your equipment manufacturers and your chemistry suppliers to make sure that you do have a good match between your chemistry and your soil and your chemistry and your equipment. And then you can go from there and with further optimization. But please verify this in your process, not in a lab setting. Let's take a few moments to discuss the various types of cleaning chemistries. Some are basically solvent born. Uh, solvents work by breaking down the soils, moving them around, and then they flash off or they evaporate. Uh, these are very commonly used in immersion, spray and wipe, aerosol systems, some batch, uh, vapor degreasing, ultrasonic units. Uh, the aqueous chemistries are water based. Those are generally a mix of solvents and surfactants or detergents and the saponifiers that we previously discussed. Uh, they can also include defoamers, wetting agents, uh, corrosion inhibitors, you know, whatever the formulator wants to put in there. Uh, these are used generally in, in many of the same types of equipment, uh, immersion, spray and wipe, uh, batch in line, ultrasonics. Um, the critical cleaning aspects of this generally require a rinsing and a drying because of the harshness of the chemistry. When doing manual cleaning, these are generally used uh, in what they call bench top cleaning or rework. Uh, it's very rare that you see OEMs that, that use this except maybe for touch-ups. Um, the pros on this, you know, there's very low setup costs. They're portable. You can move uh, the small bench top equipment or an aerosol can around and there's very little capital cost involved. Uh, the drawbacks, it's a very low volume output. It's highly dependent on the operator. There's a lot of variability, and there's generally no heat involved in these. Some of the manual cleaning uh, varieties include immersion or what we just call bucket cleaning. This can be as something as soaking a part in a pan, uh, the old drum and a sink apparatus. Uh, hand cleaning involves wipes, brushes, swabs, of trying to solvate the, the soil and get it off of the substrate by pretty much moving it around and absorbing it with the, either the swab or the brush or the wipe. Um, the aerosols, uh, they provide a lot of agitation or what we call the fire hose effect. Uh, it can be focused with an extension tube or a straw uh, that can greatly increase the impingement pressure. One thing that must be mentioned when you're doing spot cleaning or very, very small rework cleaning is that when you're using uh, things that are swabs, a lot of times, as you can see in this uh, depiction here, uh, what you end up doing is just solvating the soil and moving it around from one place on the board to another. It's very difficult to get those up with swabs and wipes. Let's discuss for a moment uh, the automated equipment cleaning. Uh, those are generally high volume, very critical cleaning. Um, the process is extremely repeatable. Uh, it can move through a lot of parts in a short amount of time, in which that increases your productivity. Uh, the drawbacks, again, you know, there's a high capital cost for your, your initial investment. Uh, their setup time, it's a piece of furniture, it's not portable. Some of the types of equipment that you'll see out there that are automated uh, are the ultrasonic units. These can be anything from a very small bench top unit to a huge unit on the floor. Uh, they use high frequency sound waves set out by a transducer to help break up the soils through the, the either solvent or the water-based material through the implosion effect. Uh, vapor degreasing is, again, that's a piece of furniture. It's very, uh, very large, you know, relative in size to some of the other equipment that you may use. Um, that cleans in the vapor phase 
uh, of the song.